it's me, Holly Walsh from CBBC, and this is this is Dunstan, the Talking Brain. Say hello, Dunstan. Hello, Mr. Digby. Uh, Mr. Digby, I should tell you, you're actually live on CBBC right now, so don't do anything embarrassing. Mm. <laughs> right, uh, Mr. Digby, is there anything you want to say to everyone at home? Mm. He doesn't look very happy, does he? No, he doesn't. Um, I know, I've got something to cheer him up. Yeah. Mr. Digby, coming up next is new, 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 new gastro nuts. Yeah. It's new! If that's worked, he doesn't it, seem that impressed. He doesn't look very happy. I don't know why I love that show. Yeah, me too. It always cheers me up. Yeah, I'll tell uh, you what, Dunstan, uh, maybe you need to come up with some sort of primate based joke. An ape pun. Do what um, you can. Uh, what do you do if you're hungry in the jungle? Put some bacon under the griller. I said under the griller. It's an ape. <laughs> I've made a right pig's ear at this. That's the nuts! I've been wondering what happens to the food that we never see. Things like the feet and the faces and the hearts of the animals that we eat. Where does it go? How much of it is actually edible? Should it all go straight in the bin, or can we eat any of it? And I wonder if some of the food that we think gets thrown away actually ends up on our plates. Coming up. That's its bum. We discover the parts of a chicken you never thought you could eat. Oh. I think I'm going to go vegetarian. We find out exactly what goes into the great British banger. And we eat the stuff you'd normally throw in the bin. Disgusting. I can't do this job on my own, so here to dig up the truth about the food we throw away are today's intrepid gastronauts. Well, my favourite food is lamb, and I would probably never eat the nose or the bum because they're not really pleasant things to think about eating. I feel quite bad about throwing food in the bin because it's a waste and food is quite tasty and all the poor people in other countries don't really get much food. At lunchtime I always throw away the crusts, I always throw away vegetables. We throw away the bones of our beef that we eat and I throw away the fat because I don't like it. I throw away my chicken bones and I give them to my dog. Who's seen one of these before? Me. Me. Yeah? What do you reckon it is? An egg. An egg. You're so right. You're geniuses. OK, now, have you ever seen one of these? Yeah. No. no. Is that is a turkey egg. Yeah. Well, I've been wondering, why don't we ever see turkey eggs? Because oh, they yeah. hide them. They hide them? Turkeys are really clever and they just hide them. That's, that, it's not actually that, but it's a is good it, answer. Is it because... Because you eat them at Christmas. Mm-hmm. So, so they don't lay eggs, and there's more chickens. The reason is, um, they're actually quite expensive, and um, turkeys don't lay that many of them, and most of them get, get fertilised to, to use um, to grow more turkeys. Mm. To see which tastes best, we're going to fry a chicken and a turkey egg side by side in the same pan. The yolks, Ooh, the the yolks, yolks are as yeah. Let's put a, a um, chicken egg in next to it to have a look. Already... Yeah. It looks lighter than that. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't actually look that much bigger now when it's in there, does it? And that's the chicken egg there. Mm. The turkey and chicken eggs are done. Time for the taste test. Mm. You have to compare the flavour. So now grab a little bit of the of, of the um, chicken one. What do you think? They do taste different. Is it a stronger flavour or a...? It's stronger. The weight is much more stronger than that. Ah. I think I prefer the turkey egg than the chicken egg because it's got a stronger taste, it's more texture to it. I prefer the turkey egg. The turkey yeah. egg. So the question is, would you eat it? Are you happy to eat turkey eggs if yeah. they're in the shop? Yeah. yeah. Most of us don't even realise that turkeys lay eggs, but they actually taste great. That got me thinking about other ingredients we wouldn't normally eat. Are there some more tasty treats we could be missing out on? What have we got here? A chicken. A chicken. What's missing with this chicken? It's head. It's head. Feathers. And Feathers. Claws. claws. Anything else? Feet. Feet. That's its bum. <laughs> can you see inside there? Uh, yeah. Put, can you put your finger in there? Have a little, have a little feel around. That is disgusting. <laughs> if you 
I've never tried it. Oh, yeah. But it's empty. What, what, would, what would you expect to find in there? Intestines. Intestines, yeah. Heart. Everything that, everything that you've got, pretty much. So what's happened to all the other bits? All the other bits that are missing? They've Where been they taken gone? out. They've been They've taken been... out. Now, have you ever seen a chicken with all of its bits on before? No, not when it's no. dead. Not when it's dead. Well... If you've got a sensitive stomach, this might be a good time to go and make a cup of tea. The gastronauts are about to dissect a whole dead chicken to find out exactly what bits get thrown away before it reaches your shopping basket. Let's take a look at the real deal. Oh, that is disgusting. Have you, have you never seen a chicken, a chicken like this before? No. no. What, what, what do you think about it? What does it make you feel? Disgusting. Disgusting. So first of all, we're going to explore the chicken to find out all the bits that we can eat. So first of all, we're going to have a little look through the neck. OK, at this stage, we have to say goodbye to the head. What do you think about that? Can we tell you that? No. No. But I tell you what, we'll come back to that later on, because there might be something else there. That is a chicken's bottom. OK. What we need to do, we need to get all of the insides out. Oh. Until relatively recently, we ate almost every part of a chicken, but nowadays, we just like the white meat and legs. The rest of the bird ends up in pet food or fertiliser. But are we wasting perfectly edible and delicious food? Oh, you're going to make us eat this. I'm gonna go vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> now let's take a look at what we've got here. What do you reckon that is? Intestines. Yes, intestines, exactly. We've all got intestines, haven't we? <laughs> that little purple thing is a kidney. Yeah. Pretty small kidney, isn't it? Mm. So what have we got here, guys? Anyone know what these are? Just pop that down for a sec, Harry. That's the liver, well done. So anyone know what this is? Heart. That is the heart. It's the heart. Now that is really good stuff, that is. Can you eat that? Well, we'll find out. Okay guys, so which of this do you think we can't eat? Why don't you pop that into the bowl for me? Very good. Now, there's just one little thing. Maybe we should just save this here. Is that urine? So, there we are. That's all edible stuff. OK, so, now, we're going to join this chicken super fast. Oh! oh it's cracked. It's going to have to be... Does it still look like a chicken? No, no. What does it look like now? Bit of meat. Bit of meat. So, the chicken has been completely gutted, and there's an incredible amount of extra bits that usually get thrown away, which are actually edible. I didn't realise there was so much you could eat. We often don't see quite a few th of these things in the chickens that we buy. Why do you think we don't? They probably don't want to show the insides because it looks a bit gory. Well, so you can't sell so many chickens yeah. if it looks a bit gruesome. But it seems like a shame to me that we, we throw all these bits away. So we're mm. going to find out if all those people who chuck it away are wrong. It's heart in mouth time for the gastronauts as they sample their first throwaway dish grilled chicken hearts. Have a little taste of that. They're a popular snack in Japan, but will these UK kids want to munch them at lunch? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Sausagey. Hold on tight. Quite rubbery. Would you try that again? Give them no, a choosy. No, no not, you're not no. too keen on that. So it's thumbs down for the heart. Chicken feet are a real delicacy in China, but will the gastronauts think that they're toe licking good? Oh, like chicken. Mm, I think it's delicious. It's nice. Lewis isn't impressed. So apart from Lewis, everyone's happy to get their jaw around some claw. Is it different from what you Does expected? Actually. Yeah, definitely. What did you expect? Horrible, crunchy, just mm. like a bone. Yeah. yeah. The idea of that, of eating that, is quite weird, isn't it? It did quite, taste quite nice, and I was quite surprised that there is no meat there, you just eat the skin. But this, I think, for me, is the weirdest, weirdest bit of all. It's the coxcomb, the bit, the bit that sits on the top of a, of a cockerel's head. Does it taste as weird as it looks? <laughs> well, that's what you're going to find out. All right. Is anybody thinking that this is going to be just gruesome? Me too. You are. Uh, I'm, are you interested? What will the gastros make of the coxcomb's unique flavour? I just got breadcrumbs and I can't actually taste mm, it. No. Mm -hmm. The inside is too squidgy and it's oh. very mm. slippery and it, you can't chew it. Yeah. Because it's a bit like eating a snail. Well, what I would imagine eating a, eating is, a snail would be like. It's quite slug like it's in your mouth, soft isn't it? And slithery. So that's a thumbs down for the coxcomb. Or is it? Yes. I like it. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. I like it. Yeah. Really you like it? <laughs> soft texture. Most people are a bit squeamish about eating things like hearts, feet and heads, 
but they're popular in other countries across the world, and they used to be in the UK too. And many of us don't realise that we're already eating things like this without even knowing it. Have you seen these before? Yeah. What are they? Sausages. OK, they are two different types of sausages. Let's all grab a little one of these, first of all. Everybody grab a piece on their fork. Sausage-like. Nice. Sausage. Let's try the other one. Everybody get in there. That tastes more like a sausage. And it's nicer. That's nicer, is it? Anyone else? Mm. Prefer that one. That one there cost seven pence a sausage. Whoa. That one there cost 38 p a sausage. Whoa. That's because it tastes better. Because it tastes better. Why do you think it's more expensive? Maybe because that one has more meat and that one has more rubbishy things inside yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Well, tell you what, let's go and find out what's in them. Let's go. In Britain, we spend over half a billion pounds every year on sausages, making them our number one tea time treat. But what exactly is a sausage made of? I'd like to introduce you to Chris. This is Chris. He's my local butcher. Oh, yeah. Right, we're going to make two sausages. We're going to make an 80% meat sausage and we're going to make a 32% meat sausage. Now, the first job we're going to do is going to be mincing the meat. First up for the mincer is the premium sausage made from 80% meat. So, what's that look like? It's not very attractive. Makes a nice sound, doesn't it? I like that sound, don't you? Next up is the economy sausage made from 32% meat and loads of added fat. That looks very fatty to me, that last chunk coming out. Oh! There are other ingredients you can add to a sausage to make it cheaper, and one of them is MRM. So Something just tell us, what, what does MRM stand for? Mechanically reclaimed meat. Uh -huh. Well, they would get something like a chicken carcass like that, and they would fire jets of water at it. And, just uh, high pressure high hose. Pressure, and the meat would fall off, and you'll get very clean bones. It's not just chicken scrapings that end up in cheap sausages. The bits of a pig you never see on the supermarket shelves get minced up and find their way into your bangers and onto your plate. Well, Let's have a little well, look at it. What, what are you thinking when you, when you hold that? That I can't believe it's in sausages. <laughs> <laughs> so, gastronauts, what, what do you think about MRM? Well, I think it's quite a good idea, except it's not very nice to think about. Kind of, it seems, about seems good to be using yeah. all the bits that we'd otherwise chuck away, but it's a pretty grim way to go about it, isn't it? All sausages have bread or cereal and water added, but the 32% sausage needs much more than the 80% sausage to make up for its lack of meat. So does it feel like you're making a good sausage there, Lewis? Yeah. feels like quite doughy and it doesn't really feel very meaty anymore. Time to pump the mixture into the natural skins, which are made from real intestines. You're going to turn the handle really slowly. First up is the sausage made from 80% meat. Brilliant. Look, you're making sausages. That's so cool. It's cool. Yeah, that's so brilliant. So, now we've done this one, this doesn't look like a sausage, does it? You just pinch it like that. So, while the premium sausages are being twisted, it's time to pump out the bargain basement bangers. Go for it, guys. Fantastic, that looks good. I've always enjoyed sausages, but now I see what's inside them, it's made me want to eat more of them. What's the difference between that and that, do you reckon? That's, like, much lighter. It's really light, that. isn't it? Yeah, they're very different, aren't they? That's brilliant work, look at that. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, let's chop that off then. Wow, well done. Okay, so let's pick them up. So, what do we reckon? That one's much lighter than that one, and I prefer that one. That looks full of fat, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Well, we should have one last taste test. Okay? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Grab a sausage each. So, guys, has making the sausages changed your attitude to what you're about to eat? No, no, no. I think what's inside the fatty ones and what's inside the nice ones. I would rather have the healthy ones. You'd rather have the healthy ones. OK, so let's taste them. I'm not telling you which one's which. I think it's the fatty one. That's the fatty <laughs> one, bitch. Not much taste. Not much taste, no. And so we reckon that, that's, the, that's the cheap one. one Everybody cheap. grab one of the other ones. Now, what are you thinking there? What's going through your mind? Very nice. Mm. Very nice. Mm. And Why? more flavour. More flavour. So much flavor. It's it's chewier. It's not as soft as the other one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so basically, it sounds like you're all in agreement. The um, expensive ones are a lot better mm -hmm. than the cheap ones. 
If you could only have 50, 50 peas worth of sausage, which meant you could have one expensive sausage or seven cheap ones, <coughs> and you were hungry, what would your decision be then? Expensive. You still just have one yeah. expensive one. That one's I'd that have one. the cheap ones because if I was really hungry, I'd just eat them. Mm. Seven cheap ones. So if you were hungry, you'd have them anyway. It's a tricky one, isn't it? Because you know people buy buy the cheap ones because you, know, you can't can't afford them. Yeah. <laughs> We'd all like to have the most expensive sausages on the planet, I guess. I'm really surprised by how very little is in the cheaper sausage. Because I thought there'd be at least fifty percent pork in any sausage. I would still eat a lot of sausages but I would always check to see if there was fat or not that much fat in my sausages. Millions of tonnes of chicken feathers are produced each year and until recently were either burned or ground down and used to feed animals. New technology has been developed to turn the fibres in chicken feathers, called keratin, into a useful form of plastic. You can now get plastic bottles, cartons and bags made from chicken feathers and unlike plastics which come from petrol, chicken feather plastic is biodegradable and easily recycled. We're trying to find out whether we can eat the food that we throw away. You're going to make us eat this? So far, we've eaten the bits from animals that never make it to the supermarket and discovered some of the surprise ingredients that go into the average sausage. In a bit, we'll meet a chef who specialises in cooking with bits that others are too scared to touch. But first, I'm going to try and cook up a delicious meal with the stuff that usually ends up in our own bins. <coughs> I'm making myself a fantastic fish pie, but once I've filleted the fish, I've got all these bones left over. Normally, they go in the bin, but today I'm cooking with the food we usually throw away. This fish and the crab and the shellfish and stuff will make an amazing, amazing fish soup. I've also found some old bananas. Now, the bananas, you know, when a banana gets to that stage, you'd probably think about throwing it away. But it's all good stuff inside there. Even if it looks a little bit dark and, and mushy, that's fantastic for making banana cake. So what I'm going to do with all these bits that we'd normally throw away is make a fantastic fish soup. And here's how you make it. It's dead simple. Just take an onion, chop it nice and finely. A little bit of oil oil. Chuck in a few tired old vegetables that you might also throw away. Pan on over a high heat. You might want an adult to help you with this bit. And then you take all of your bits and pieces of fish and just throw them in the pan. Some herbs and some garlic. A little bit of tomato puree. A can of tomatoes. Cover with water and bring to the boil. Well, while that's boiling, we'll get started with the banana cake. You take a couple of tired old bananas. Nothing too mouldy, obviously. That would be bad. See, they're, they're very old, but they're still, it's still really good stuff. Mash. There we go. A good banana slop. You need just under two cups of flour, a cup of oil, go. a cup of sugar. We drop three eggs. Pop the banana in there as well. And then this horrible mess needs to be beaten well and turned into a lovely smooth batter. And then when it's all nicely mixed, put it into your cake tin. So this is just bananas that I would have otherwise thrown away. So you then put the cake tin into the oven at 180 degrees for about 50 to 60 minutes. So about halfway through, you need to take your fish soup, and this is the fun bit, an unusual cooking implement. Mm -hmm. You need to bash apart your fish, very gently so you don't splash yourself, and break down all of those big chunks. And if you look in here, you can start to see all the little bits of fish are coming off the bones, and that's all amazing, fantastic flavour. And then back on for another ten minutes. So when that's cooked nicely through, you need to strain it to get all the bits and pieces and the, the bits of bone and shell out. And all of this stuff here has got really good flavour, so you need to squish that through as well. Finally, I've got something that I can throw away, knowing that I've got every last bit of flavour out of it. A little bit of lemon in that. And there we have... ...beautiful fish soup. <laughs> Meanwhile, the cake should have been finished. There we go. That looks fantastic. Look at that. Here we 
we are. Leftover fish soup and overripe banana cake. Job done. So let's have a little taste. That is fantastic. You could, you could charge a lot of money for that in a good restaurant. And that's just from scraps of old fish. And that is absolutely delicious. I'm so glad I didn't throw all those things away. We've become so fussy about our food that an enormous amount of it goes to waste, either because we chuck it out or because we'll only eat certain parts of what we produce. But in recent years, leading chefs have rediscovered classic dishes from the past where nothing is wasted. We've come to the restaurant of Tom Illich to see how he uses the stuff we usually throw out to make cutting-edge cuisine. Hi, Tom. Hello. Um, now, you're at the real sharp end of this, because Tom has to actually take all those things that we find quite strange and quite new, and he's got to make a business out of it. He's got to sell stuff. So, so Tom, what can you show us? I think it's the best way to go over there. Let's go and do it. Excellent. This is what we're going to be doing today. Does anyone know what that is? Is it a leg? No, but it's close to the legs. It's hanging out, and it does swing a little bit. Tail. tail. Yes, mm. it's an ox tail. Have you ever eaten tail before? Yeah. I'll grab one and, and see how heavy it is. So, guys, this, these tails basically spend their lives swishing flies away from bottoms. Is it something that would spring to mind to you that you'd, you'd want to eat? No. no. When I heard that um, it always just flaps around to stop flies from coming to the bottom, it made me. I feel like, I don't want to eat that. So, Tom, what are we going to be making? We're going to do ravioli with it. Obviously, that's going to be now slow cooked for about eight hours. Then we pick the meat and roll it into meatballs, and that's what we end up with. What does it look like to you guys? Meatballs. It looks like meatballs. Yeah. Exactly, that's what I call it, but it's an oxtail meatball. Shall we get on with it? Right, you need two pieces each. A little bit of egg. Not so long ago, the idea of eating tail would never have crossed the gastro's minds. Now they're actually cooking with it. Just keep on moving, don't be afraid, even if it breaks a little bit. Excellent, yeah. that's looking perfect. Good! Well, that wasn't too hard, was it? They look fantastic, guys, look at that. Now we're going to take it to the edible stage. So, we're going to poach this for three minutes, and all we do that is a bit of salty water with some oil, so to prevent pasta to stick together. Shall we go and taste? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. At first I thought it was like a lamb's leg or something, but when um, Tom told me it was um, an oxtail, I was a bit disgusted. Didn't really want to try it. And here we go, the finished product, Looks oxtail nice. ravioli. Looks very nice. So should we try it, guys? Yeah. That's pretty good. You know when you go to a Chinese restaurant and you have duck? It mm -hmm. tastes a little bit like yeah. duck. Mm. Well, I would have expected it to be a bit, um, a bit more chewy and a bit harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's quite tender. I want to know how far the gastronauts have come since their initial disgust at seeing what's really inside a chicken. Yeah. Oh. Are they ready to embrace all the challenging food that Tom cooks, or will they let the idea of what's in it put them off? Uh, OK, napkins out, everyone. Hello again. What have you got there for us, Tom? Ah. Uh. First up, the gastronauts are being offered some bone marrow, the soft tissue inside the hard outer layer of bone. What do you think about the idea of eating bone marrow? It's disgusting. Disgusting. <laughs> I didn't think there was actually anything inside the bone. I thought it was just a bone. The bone marrow is roasted and served with young spring vegetables and garlic bread. Ding it in. There's not a lot of meat in there, is there? It is. What do you reckon? It's quite nice, but I think there's too much salt. It's quite fatty as well. Mm -hmm. It tastes of fat with, like, salt on it. Yeah. Except I like it. You like it? They didn't even know what it was, but the gastros have scooped up the bone marrow like it was chocolate spread. Would you try that again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Like My dog has bone marrow, and I think she's very lucky to get so much of it. Next up, the nuts face something that's even harder to describe and to swallow. And here we go again. That looks Ooh. extraordinary. No guesses? Looks like chicken, yeah. It is. Chicken. Like chicken. Looks like chicken. Sweet breads. They're not sweet and they're not bread. They're actually a gland that produces cells that fight infection. What do you think it's going to taste it's like? Quite soft, I would say. Mm -hmm. The sweet breads are roasted, then served with goat's cheese and a salsa verde. It's not actually 
actually how I expected because I thought it was going to be chewy, but it's actually really soft and it sort of melts in your mouth. Really nice, good texture, good flavour. Mm -hmm. It's really soft. So the gastros give a big hand to the glands. Did it look a little bit scary when yeah, it was raw? Yeah. But but having eaten it, you you feel a bit happier about nice. it. Nice. Finally, Tom cooks up his signature dish, something that will shock, amaze, and potentially appall the gastronauts. Here we go again. Oh, my word. That doesn't look very nice. That is... Uh, You've definitely seen size. that. Yeah. It doesn't look like food, but pig's head is a classic ingredient in British cooking. What do you think of that, guys? Interesting. Disgusting. Mm. Again. again yes. weird. Why, why is it so different from seeing the bits of bits that have been cut up? Because the bits that have been cut up, well, you're you're used to seeing them being cooked and raw. You're not used to just seeing a pig's head on the table. Yeah, and this is it's unavoidable. You know, if you're going to eat sausages like we like we cook, this has got to happen. Face. This part here, well, what you're going to try afterwards from the cooked version is actually come from here, somewhere within that head. Any guesses? Is it the forehead or the cheek or something? The cheek. Yes, you're right. You guessed it. So the final dish is braised pig's cheeks with garlic and parsley mash. Go for it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is this your first taste of pig's head? Not sure I really needed to ask that question, but you've got to check. I think that's actually really nice. Why? It's got a nice texture to it, and it's got a nice taste. So, pig's cheeks get smiley faces all round. I never thought I would ever eat pig's cheeks. But I don't think I'd be able to, um, I would ever eat any of the stuff that we tried. To think we chuck away the pig's head, and this is, the meat like this is on the head. It's quite strange that we chuck it away. I was blind, now I can see. I can't tell you how proud I am of the gastronauts because they've they've tried all these foods that look, frankly, quite terrifying. Some of them, they've gone ahead, they've tasted them, and, and they found that some of them are really, really good. Not all of them need to be thrown away, not just because it's a waste, but also because a lot of them taste fantastic. Well, I loved the part where we um, tried the three foods in um, the restaurant because there were very strange foods that you'd always think you would just chuck away, but they actually taste really nice. I love pulling apart the chicken and tasting it because it was interesting to see what was actually inside the chicken that I didn't know that we could eat. Now I'm going to think twice about um, eating, instead of just eating like the breast of a chicken, I'm going to eat the other parts as well. Well, I think throwing food away now was quite a bad thing to do if you could eat it. Because if you throw it away, it's just wasting all this food that you could eat. It's good to try loads of food, and there's been some really weird food shown today, and I've just had a crack at it. Turn meal times into an adventure with the Gastronauts website at bbc.co.uk slash cbbc. We are not alone. Hurry, little children, run this way. I have got a beast at play. Summon all your mental strength. In this land of dangers and demons, lives can be lost. Only those brave warriors who survive this place and continue on the quest to be named Ultimate Champion. The brand new series of Raven, Tuesdays and Thursdays at five past four, CBBC on BBC One. Hello, Mr. Digby. Hello. Hello, Holly Donson and Mr. Digby here. Mr. Digby is uh, currently in a zoo. Uh, we've got a satellite link up. Well, it's more of a webcam link up. <laughs> and, uh, oh, doesn't sound too happy. Well, mm. apparently his big dream is to be on TV, so we're trying to help him out by uh, getting him on CBBC. He hides that dream very well, doesn't he? Yeah, he certainly does. Well, I've got some information about him here. Are you ready for this? What have we got? 
Mr. Digby is a mountain ape originating, originating from the Virunga volcanic mountains of Central Africa. Ooh. As a subspecies of the eastern ape, Mr. Digby is one of the world's largest living primates. In his spare time, Mr. Digby likes to write screenplays. Ooh. His greatest success to date being Saving Primate Ryan. Hi, I've seen that. Any good? It's, uh, well, it's not bad. OK. Yeah. Well, as a performer, he has appeared in Raw, the final episode of The Really Wild Show, and Blue Peter, when he pooed on the studio floor. Frustratingly, he has, he has received little acclaim for this, finding himself often overshallowed by less deserving individuals like the elephant. He is currently writing his second film, High School Musical, a project he quotes as his last attempt to get a load of idiots to give him the recognition he deserves, or else.